our first chart brings together all the banks by assets uh, and in terms of region and I say region um, even though there are two countries on there um, but it's a quite peculiar situation where uh, the region that dominates is Asia followed by followed by the Commonwealth countries and here it is the USA is falling behind quite a bit at 13 percent for these top 50 banks and if you take the same banks and this time we look now at their capital base as opposed to their asset base you see that the asian banks are actually more dominant in terms of capitalization whereas the eu declines uh, the commonwealth increases in terms of uh, capitalization and look at the USA declines significantly in terms of capital base so what can we conclude from even just these two charts looking at the top 50 banks in 2015 but firstly the Asian banks dominate secondly uh, the asset base of the Commonwealth banks rank third after the Asian and EU banks but more importantly I think the Commonwealth banks are second in capital after the Asian banks and both the EU and US banks capital base are less convincing than their asset base relative uh, to Asian and Commonwealth banks it simply means that the Asian and Commonwealth banks are putting more emphasis on their capital base than their counterparts in the EU and the US. Now that is food for thought because if there is a problem which banks would you think would stand the test better? Let's look at the same 50 banks but this time by country so irrespective of region we're breaking it down by country and we're first looking at assets and lo and behold China stands head and shoulders above everybody else there are some other standouts there we have uh, France we have Japan we have the UK and we have the USA. Interesting, very interesting list. Where is Germany? 4%. But bear in mind that the same 50 banks we can now look at the capital base and you can see China's share of that pie rises to 42%. A clear indication that China has put more emphasis on capitalizing their banks. Uh, relative to the others um, UK stands at 10% so they're fine the USA on the other hand again declines to 1% but look at Australia look at Canada stronger showing in terms of capitalization and this is very important when there is turmoil which banks are going to stand the test so let's summarize again. The top 50 banks globally in 2050, 15, sorry, are the Chinese banks, the asset base of UK banks, ranks fifth after China, France, Japan, and the US. This is the asset base. But in that list of 50 banks, the UK banks are third in capital after Chinese and Japanese banks. Both European and US banks, the capital base again are less convincing than Chinese, Japanese, Australian, Canadian and UK banks. Now the analysis is a snapshot uh, for 2015. 
and it just gives us a view of the assets and the corresponding capital for these top 50 banks worldwide. It does not have a comparison for the previous year or period of time. However, it is safe to assume that the elephant in the room, China, is one reason why the yuan is being tipped as the next world reserve currency. Now that's an interesting point. Even in spite of the fact that the yuan is actually declining in value as we speak. Now, Brexit, Brexit is all about making decisions uh, for the future of Great Britain. And I don't know about anybody else, but I am all about rational economic decisions. From a banking point of view, all banks are the best in the world. And similarly, our Commonwealth partners are also very good bankers. And for those people who are making decisions based on race, yeah, shame on you. And leaders, well, it's now time to wake up 